Hello, I'm Cecilia Rodriguez Milanes from the University of Central Florida, and I am happy to contribute to the Miami Dade College Readathon in order to celebrate and publicize some of the banned books from Tucson, Arizona. I am happy to also have asked uh, some of my students to contribute to this endeavor, and those are separate videos that you will see uh, Liz Benny Durang, Criseli Melesio Sembrano, Jennifer Ray, and Amy Fallone. And also, I'm very happy that my new colleague, Gabriela Rios, has read also. So uh, my contribution will be uh, from Gloria Anzaldúa's very important book, Borderlands Frontera. And this is a book that I teach very regularly, especially the chapter that I'm going to read from. And um, here's the cover of the book. And the chapter I'm going to read is, from, uh, is called How to Tame a Wild Tongue. This is chapter five, How to Tame a Wild Tongue. We're going to have to control your tongue, the dentist says, pulling out all the metal from my mouth. Silver, silver bits plop and tinkle into the basin. My mouth is a mother load. The dentist is cleaning out my roots. I get a whiff of the stench when I gasp. I can't cap that tooth yet. You're still draining, he says. We're going to have to do something about your tongue. I hear the anger rising in his voice. My tongue keeps pushing out the, word, the wads of cotton, pushing back the drills, the long, thin needles. I've never seen anything as strong or as stubborn, he says. And I think, how do you tame a wild tongue? Train it to be quiet. How do you bridle and saddle it? How do you make it lie down? Who is to say that robbing a people of its language is less violent than war? A quote from Ray Gwynne Smith. I remember being caught speaking Spanish at recess. That was good for three licks on the knuckles with a sharp ruler. I remember being sent to the corner of the classroom for talking back to the Anglo teacher when all I was trying to do was tell her how to pronounce my name. If you want to be American, speak American. If you don't like it, go back to Mexico where you belong. I want to speak English. Para hallar bien trabajo, tienes que saber hablar el inglés bien. ¿Qué vale toda la ed educación si todavía hablas inglés con un accent? My mother would say, mortified that I spoke English like a Mexican. At Pan American University, I and all Chicano students were required to take two speech classes. Their purpose to get rid of our accents. Attacks on one's form of expression with the intent to censor are a violation of the First Amendment. El anglo con cara de inocente nos arranca la lengua. Wild tongues can't be tamed. They can only be cut out. Overcoming the tradition of silence. En boca cerrada no entran moscas. Flies don't enter a closed mouth is a saying I kept hearing when I was a child. Ser habladora was to be a gossip or a, and a liar, to talk too much. Muchachitas bien criadas, well-bred girls, don't answer back. Es una falta de respeto, de respeto to talk back to one's mother or father. I remember one of the sins I'd recite to the priest in the confession box the few times I went to confession, talking back to my mother, hablar para atrás, Repeliar, osicona, replenona, chismosa, having a big mouth, questioning, carrying tales are all signs of being malcriada. In my culture, they are all words that are derogatory if applied to women. I've never heard them applied to men. The first time I heard two women, a Puerto Rican and a Cuban, say, nosotras, I was shocked. I had not known the word existed. Chicanas use nosotros, whether we're male or female. We are robbed of, of our female being by the masculine plural. Language is a male discourse. And our tongues have become dry. The wilderness has dried out our tongues, and we have forgotten speech. A quote from Irena Clefitz. Even our own people, other Spanish speakers, no quieren poner calladas en la, candadas en la boca. They would hold us back with their bags, with their bag of reglas de aca academia. Oye como ladra el lenguaje de la frontera. Mexican saying, quien tiene boca se equivoca.
Pocho, cultural traitor, you are speaking the oppressor's language by speaking English. You're ruining the Spanish language. I have been accused by various Latinos and Latinas. Chicano Spanish is considered by the purest and by most Latinos def deficient, a mutilation of Spanish. But Chicano Spanish is a border tongue which developed naturally. Change, evol evolución, Enriquecimiento de palabras nuevas por invención o adopción have created variants of Chicano Spanish, un nuevo lenguaje, un lenguaje que corresponde a un modo de vivir. Chicano Spanish is not incorrect. It is a living language. For people who are neither Spanish nor live in a country which in which Spanish is the first language, for people who live in a country in which English is the reigning tongue, but who are not Anglo, for a people who cannot entirely identify with either standard, formal Castilian Spanish nor standard English, what recourse is left to them but to create their own language? A language which they can connect their identity to, one capable of communicating the realities and values true to themselves, a language with terms that are neither Espanol ni Inglés, but both. We speak a patois, a forked tongue, a variation of two languages. Chicano Spanish sprang out of the Chicanos' need to identify ourselves as a distinct people. We needed a language with which we could communicate with ourselves, a secret language. For some of us, language is a homeland closer than the Southwest. For many Chicanos today live in the Midwest and the East. And because we are a complex, heterogeneous people, we speak many languages. Some of the languages we speak are, number one, standard English, number two, working class and slang English, number, two, uh, number three, standard Spanish, number four, standard Mexican Spanish, number five, North Mexican Spanish dialect, number six, Chicano Spanish, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California have regional variations. Number seven, Tex-Mex. Number eight, Pachuco, also called Galo. My home tongues are the languages I speak with my sister and brothers, with my friends. They are the last five listed, with six and seven being closest to my heart. From school, the media, and job situations, I have picked up standard and working class English. From Mama Grande Locha and from hearing, reading Spanish and Mexican literature, I picked up standard Spanish and standard Mexican Spanish. From Los Recién Llegados, Mexican immigrants and braceros, I learned the North Mexican dialect. With Mexicans, I'll try to speak either standard Mexican Spanish or the North Mexican dialect. From my parents and Chicanos living in the valley, I picked up Chicano Texas Spanish, and I speak it with my mom, younger sisters, who married a Mexican and who rarely mixes Spanish and English, with English, aunts and other relatives. With Chicanas from Nuevo Mexico or Arizona, I will speak Chicano Spanish a little, but often they don't understand what I'm saying. With most California Chicanas, I speak entirely in English unless I forget. When I first moved to San Francisco, I rattled off something in Spanish, unintentionally embarrassing them. Often it is only with another Chicana Tejana that I can talk freely. Words distorted by English are known as anglicisms or pochismos. The pocho is an anglicized Mexican or American of Mexican origin who speaks Spanish with an accent characteristic of North Americans and who distorts and reconstructs the language according to the influence of English. Tex-Mex or Spanglish comes most naturally to me. I may switch back and forth from English to Spanish in the same sentence or in the same word. With my sister and my brother Nune and with Chicano Tejano contemporaries, I speak in Tex-Mex. From kids and people my own age, I picked up Pachuco. Pachuco, the language of the Zoot Suiters, is a language of rebellion. Both against Spanish, standard Spanish and standard English, it is a secret language. Adults of the culture and outside cannot understand it. It is made up of slang words from both English and Spanish. Ruca means girl or woman. Ra vato means guy or dude. Chale means no. Simon means yes. Churro is sure. Talk es periquear. Um, que gacho means how nerdy. Ponte águila means watch out. Death is la pelona. Through lack of practice and not having others who can speak it, I've lost most of the Pachuco tongue.
I'm going to skip a little bit. It's a long chapter. This section is called Linguistic Terrorism. Deslenguadas, somos los que somos los del español deficiente. We are your linguistic nightmare, your linguistic aberration, your linguistic mestizaje, the subject of your burla. Because we speak with tongues of fire, we are culturally crucified. Racially, culturally, and linguist linguistically, somos huérfanos. We speak an orphan tongue. Chicanos who grew up speaking Chicano Spanish have internalized the belief that we speak poor Spanish. It is illegitimate, a bastard language. And because we internalize how our language has been used against us by the dominant culture, we use our language differences against each other. Chicana feminists often skirt around each other with suspicion and hesitation. For the longest time, I couldn't figure it out. Then it dawned on me. To be close to another Chicana is like looking in the mirror. We are afraid of what we'll see there. Pena, shame. Low, self, low estimation of self. In childhood, we are told that our language is wrong. Repeated attacks on our language tongue, our native tongue, diminish our sense of self. The attacks continue throughout our lives. Chicanas feel uncomfortable talking in Spanish to Latinas, afraid of their censure. Their language was not outlawed in their countries. They had a whole lifetime of being immersed in their native tongue, generations, centuries in which Spanish was the first language, taught in school, heard on radio and TV, and read in the newspaper. If a person, Chicana or Latina, has a low estimation of my native tongue, she also has a low estimation of me. Often with Mexicanas y Latinas, we'll speak English as a neutral language. Even among Chicanas, we tend to speak English at parties or conferences. Yet at the same time, we're afraid the other will think we're agringadas because we don't speak Chicano Spanish. We oppress each other, trying to out-Chicano each other, vying to be the real Chicanas, to speak like Chicanos. There is no one Chicano language, just as there is no one Chicano experience. A monolingual Chicana whose first language is English or Spanish is just as much a Chicana as the one who speaks several variants of Spanish. A Chicana from Michigan or Chicago or Detroit is just as much a Chicana as one from the Southwest. Chicano Spanish is as diverse linguistically as it is regionally. By the end of this century, Spanish speakers will comprise the biggest minority group in the United States, a country where students in high schools and colleges are encouraged to take French classes because French is considered more cultured. But for a language to remain alive, it must be used. By the end of this century, English, not Spanish, will be the mother tongue of most Chicanos and Latinos. So if you really want to hurt me, talk badly about my language. Ethnic identity is twin skin to linguistic identity. I am my language. Until I can take pride in my language, I cannot take pride in myself. Until I can accept as legitimate Chicano, Texas, Spanish, Tex-Mex, and all the other languages I speak, I cannot accept the legitimacy of myself. Until I am free to write bilingually and to switch codes without having always to translate, while I still have to speak English and Spanish when I would rather speak Spanglish, and as long as I have to accommodate the English speakers rather than having them accommodate me, my tongue will be illegitimate. I will non no longer be made to feel ashamed of existing. I will have my voice, I Indian, Spanish, white. I will have my serpent's tongue, my woman's voice, my sexual voice, my poet's vi voice. I will overcome the tradition of silence. This is from the section called Si le preguntas a mi mamá, ¿qué eres? This is a quote from Kaufman. Identity is the essential core of who we are as individuals, the conscious experience of the self inside. Nosotros los chicanos straddle the borderlands. On one side of us, we are constantly exposed to the Spanish of the Mexicans. On the other side, we hear the Anglos' incessant clamoring so that we forget our language. Among ourselves, we don't say nosotros los americanos or nosotros los españoles or nosotros los hispano. We say nosotros los mexicanos. By me mexicanos, we do not mean citizens of Mexico. We do not mean a national identity, but a racial one. We distinguish between Mexicanos del otro lado and Me Mexicanos de este lado. Deep in our hearts, we believe that being Mexican has nothing to do with which country one lives in. Being Mexican is a state of soul, not one of mine, not one of citizenship. 
neither eagle, eagle nor serpent, but both. And like the ocean, neither animal respects borders. Mexican saying, Dime con quien andas y te diré quién eres. Tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Si le preguntan a mi mamá qué eres, te dirá, soy mexicana. My brothers and sisters say the same. I sometimes will say, soy mexicana, and other times I'll say, soy chicana, or soy tejana. But I identify as raza before I ever identified as Mex mexicana or chicana. As a culture, we call ourselves Spanish when referring to ourselves as a linguistic group and when copping out. It is then that we forget our predominant Indian genes. We are 70 to 80 percent Indian. We call ourselves Hispanic or Spanish-American or Latin-American or Latin when linking ourselves to other Spanish-speaking peoples of the Western Hemisphere and when copying out. We call ourselves Me Mexican-American to signify we are neither Mexican nor American, but more the noun American than the adjective Mexican when we are copying out. Chicanos and other people of color suffer economically for not acculturating. This voluntary forced alienation makes for psychological conflict, a kind of dual identity. We don't identify with the Anglo-American cultural values, and we don't to totally identify with Mexican cultural values. We are a synergy of two cultures with varying, various degrees of Mexicanness or Angloness. I have so internalized the borderland conflict that sometimes I feel that one cancels out the other and we are a zero. Nothing, no one. A veces soy nada de nadie, pero hasta cuando no lo soy, lo soy. When not copying out, when we know we are more than nothing, we call ourselves Mexican, referring to race and ancestry. Mestizo, when affirming both our Indian and Spanish, but we hardly ever own our black ancestry. Chicano when referring to a politically aware people born and or raised in the United States. Raza when referring to Chicanos. Tejanos when we were Chicanos from Texas. Chicanos did not know we were a people until 1965 when Cesar Chavez and the Farm Workers United and I Am Joaquin was published and La Raza Unida Party was formed in Texas. With that recognition, we became a distinct people. Something momentous happened to the Chicano soul. We became aware of our reality and acquired a name and a language, Chicano Spanish, that reflected that reality. Now that we had a name, some of the fragmented pieces began to fall together, who we were, what we were, how we evolved. We began to get glimpses of what might, we might eventually become. Yet the struggle of identities continues. The struggle of borders is our reality still. One day the inner struggle will cease and a true integration take place. In the meantime, tenemos que hacer la lucha. ¿Quién está protegiendo los ranchos de mi gente? ¿Quién está tratando de cerrar la fisura entre la India y el blanco en nuestra sangre? El chicano, sí, el chicano que anda como un ladrón en su propia, ca propia casa. Los Chicanos, how patient we seem, how very patient. There is quiet of the Indian about us. We know how to survive. When other races have given up their tongue, we've kept ours. We know what it is to live under the hammer blow of the dominant Norte Americano culture. But more than that, then, but more than we can count the blows, we count the days, the weeks, the years, the centuries, the eons, until the white laws and commerce and customs will rot in the deserts they've created, lie bleached. Humildes, yet proud, quietos, yet wild, nosotros los mexicanos, chicanos, will walk by the crumbling ashes as we go about our business, stubborn, persevering, persevering impenetrable as stone, yet possessing a malleability that renders us unbreakable. We, the mestizos and mestizas, will remain. I hope you read this whole book. It really is amazing. And uh, thank you.